hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking all about lash serums and fat loss. I've gotten a lot of requests to talk about can lash serums cause fat loss around the eyes that lead to sunken eyes? This is something we should be worried about. We're gonna cover it in today's video. Lash serums, probably what comes to mind first and foremost is going to be the prescription Latisse. This belongs to a class of medications which are called prostaglandin analogs. Latisse is just a brand name. The actual drug is Bimatoprost, a prostaglandin analog. Prostaglandin analogs like Bimatoprost, aka Latisse, originally were used and continue to be used to treat something called glaucoma, which is an eye disease. As a side effect, it was noted that uh, the eyelashes were getting thick and long. So Allergan was like, sweet, let's rebrand this and get FDA approval. And there and behold, in 2007, we had Latisse. What about the lash serums that you buy in the store? Those are cosmetics. They're not drugs, therefore they don't require a prescription. But the ingredients that those contain, they may actually act to a certain degree like a prostaglandin analog and have similar effects. However, because they're cosmetics, they're less predictable. It's hard to say for sure which, if any of them, are beneficial. And it's also very difficult to say to what extent the prostaglandin analog-like compounds in some of those lead to the same side effects that the prescription Latisse can cause. What side effects? Well, probably if you've ever used Latisse, you know it can cause quite a bit of eyelid irritation eventually. It can lead to redness of the eyes. That's known as conjunctival hyperemia, basically the eyes just get very red, it can make your eyelids itchy, and in some cases it actually can lead to hyperpigmentation of the eyelid skin, which was really bothersome to people, but fortunately once you stop it, in most cases that hyperpigmentation will resolve. In some rare cases it actually can change the color of the iris of your eye as well, and rarer side effects might even include loss of color of the eyelashes. Ophthalmologists noted a change in the eyes in patients who are using bimatoprost and other prostaglandin analogs to treat their glaucoma. Because in many of these cases, patients with glaucoma, they're only using the prostaglandin analog in one eye, the changes around the eye became a lot more obvious. As you can imagine, all of a sudden one eye looks much different than the other eye. Specifically, they noted something called deepening of the upper eyelid sulcus, otherwise known as dews. And you also have something called anophthalmos. That's the medical term for sunken eyes. Along with that, they also observed dermatochalasis, which is the medical term for redundant, loose eyelid skin. In some cases, these changes resulted in more prominent appearance of the lower aspect of the whites of the eyes and flattening of the under eye bags. These findings around the eyes have been most striking with bimatoprost for the treatment of glaucoma, but they also can be observed with other prostaglandin analogs, including latanoprost and travoprost. Though it occurs to a lesser extent with those other prostaglandin analogs, it's most striking with bimatoprost, and in some cases, switching from bimatoprost to another prostaglandin analog can result in reversal of this constellation of changes around the eyes. The term prostaglandin-associated periorbitopathy, or PAP, was coined to describe the constellation of findings that were observed in patients using bimatoprost and or other prostaglandin analogs to treat their glaucoma. Lending further evidence to support that bimatoprost is more of a culprit in these eye changes than other prostaglandin analogs when a patient with glaucoma who has been using latanoprost is switched over to bimatoprost, there is an increased incidence of dews, deepening of the upper eyelid sulcus. It's thought that bimatoprost has more potent impacts on the fat around the eyes and it's changes in the fat from bimatoprost that lead to these changes around the eyes with deepening of the upper eyelid sulcus and the overall appearance of a sunken eye. In many cases, however, once the bimatoprost is stopped, well, these changes, they will go back to the normal appearance and the fat can re be restored. Fortunately, in most cases, it appears to be reversible when either you stop using the prostaglandin analog or at the very least, if you are on bimatoprost, switching to another prostaglandin an analog does seem to improve things. Not everyone develops this. In addition to bimatoprost being more likely to cause PAP, studies have identified some other risk factors, namely being of an older age. 
It does appear as though having a BMI greater than or equal to 23 is associated with a less likely chance of developing PAP. PAP can appear anywhere from a few weeks of starting bimatoprost all the way out to several years later. Why exactly do these anatomical changes occur with bimatoprost? It's thought to be secondary to prostaglandin analog effects on uh, fat differentiation. Specifically, an increase in prostaglandin F2 alpha is thought to be inhibitory for adipogenesis, new fat cell formation. This is thought to occur via inhibitory effects on the hormone receptor PPAR gamma, which is central to adipocyte differentiation. Once the bimatoprost is discontinued, that suppressive effect is removed and adipocyte differentiation can proceed. And that may explain why you can get some reversal, if not complete reversal, when stopping bimatoprost. How common is this? Overall, it appears to be a rare side effect, and it's likely a very rare side effect when using bimatoprost solely for eyelash enhancement because you are not putting it directly in your eye as would be the case with glaucoma treatment. Instead, you are applying it along the lash line at the base of the lashes. It's kind of difficult though to say for sure exactly how common this is, and overall it may be underreported because these changes, they may be subtle, if the patient is using bimatoprost or other prostaglandin analogs to both eyes, well, the changes may be so subtle that they never even notice. It's, the changes are more striking when you're only using it to one eye. I also think that in the case of, say, for example, glaucoma, a lot of cases may be missed because it's simply chalked up to age-related change in the fat pads around the eyes. As you guys remember, I have a video all about how your face changes with age, and the fat pads around your eyes, they do reduce in size with age. That's part of what uh, is to blame for not only more of a sunken appearance to the eyes, but prominent under eye hollows and the more obvious dark under eye circles. We talked all about that in how your face changes with age. But uh, bimatoprost certainly can influence that, likely through its effects on fat cell differentiation. The ophthalmologists also point out some concerns with possible impact of these changes to the fat pad on how the muscles around the eyes are able to perform. There have been some cases of a droopy eyelid as it relates to PAP developing. That is another potential complication of this. But again, these changes are mostly being reported in patients using prostaglandin analogs, especially bimatoprost, for the treatment of glaucoma where you are putting it directly in the eye, not uh, bimatoprost, aka Latisse, to the eyelash uh, lid margin. Uh, for eyelash growth. Overall, I do believe that the risk of this occurring with, say, prescription Latisse is pretty low, especially if used as directed, but it is important to follow up regularly with your dermatologist or whoever has prescribed this so that you can be appropriately monitored for any potential side effects and the medication can be discontinued as needed when side effects occur. But can you develop atrophy of the fat around your eyes from using non-prescription lash serums? Uh, there are many out there. Say for example, Revitalash, I have a video on that. I mean, there are a lot right? A lot of lash serums out there. It's actually hard to say uh, because those are not drugs, they're cosmetics. So the monitoring of adverse events with those is not necessarily going to be there. I mean, when you go out and you buy a lash serum, nobody's following you and you may not notice that you have this fat loss. So it becomes even more difficult to accurately know if a lash serum is going to put someone at risk. I would say it's a theoretical possibility, but I'm not aware of any cases of PAP developing or lipoatrophy developing from using store-bought lash serums. The research that we have to date suggests that bimatoprost is the most likely to cause this. And again, it can be reversed upon cessation of bimatoprost. But the research that we have today suggests that it's primarily an issue for people using this treatment for glaucoma, where again, you're putting it directly in your eye. It does seem lower risk when using it to the eyelid margin at the base of the lashes for lash enhancement, as in the case of Latisse. To minimize the potential risk for lipoatrophy, PAP developing from using Latisse, because it is a 
potential, although rare, side effect, what can you do? Make sure you follow the instructions to a T. You wanna start with a clean face. You wanna make sure that you have removed all of your eye makeup and that you're not wearing any contact lenses. Then you're just going to apply one drop to the upper eyelid margin at the base of the eyelashes using the sterile applicator. The base of the lashes should feel moist, but there shouldn't be any drips. If you have some drips, take a tissue and use it to absorb any excess. So you really just want a little bit of slight moist sensation at the base of the lashes. You don't want it dripping. After you have applied it, discard of the applicator and get a new applicator to use for the other eye. You need to use a new sterile applicator each time. Don't save and reuse applicators. Importantly, make sure that you follow up with the prescriber when you're using this, because that way you can be appropriately monitored for the development of any side effects. They can counsel you on stopping it when those start to occur. If the side effects of lipoatrophy do start to occur, stopping the bimatoprost, AKA Latisse, can result in reversal. Now, if you stop using Latisse and you switch to a lash serum that you buy in the store, can this go away? It's very possible. It's very possible. For whatever reason, it seems as though bimatoprost is the most offensive for developing this and that it's switching to something like a over-the-counter lash serum may make a difference. Now, in my opinion, which I've shared on here before, I have a lot of reservations with lash serums as a whole, including Latisse, but at least in the case of Latisse, uh, we know what to look for and you're being followed by the prescriber for these adverse effects. I do find it is a bit more of a wild west out there when it comes to lash serums that you buy in the store. And I do have concerns that they could have some of these untoward effects and there's no one monitoring for those effects and they can certainly cause a lot of eyelid irritation, irritation to the eyes, and chronic dry eyes, which are not something that you wanna to have to deal with. I mean, dry eyes are really common, but to have them made worse by a cosmetic product, it just seems, it seems like a lot. Not only do I not use lash serums, but I don't feel comfortable promoting them on here to you all, knowing the gamut of potential complications that can happen from them, including the rare and unlikely complication that you lose fat around your eyes. I would hate for that to happen to anyone on my recommendation. So you won't find me on this channel recommending lash serums. Many companies over the years that have lash serums have invited me to try their lash serums, to review them for uh, consideration for paid promotion. And I always turn those down because I don't use lash serums and I don't recommend them and I have concerns. All that to say, Latisse, aka Bimatoprost, it definitely has a place in uh, improving quality of life for people. Losing your eyelashes um, can be way, is way more than a cosmetic issue. Light eyelashes are really important for actually protecting the health of your eyes. And there are many uh, conditions where patients lose their eyelashes. Uh, for example, there's an autoimmune hair loss condition known as alopecia areata, and those patients can end up losing their eyelashes, and their eyes can become very dry, very irritated. Latisse can make a huge difference for them. Sometimes people lose their eyelashes as it relates to chemotherapy, and again, that can be very uncomfortable and cause complications for them. So Latisse definitely has a role. And to completely lose your eyelashes, not only can it cause harm to your eyes because they are a functional structure, but it definitely can impact the way that your face looks and that can make you feel, uh, you know, impact your overall quality of life and self-esteem. So I am not totally anti-Latisse, but I do have reservations with the over-the-counter stuff. There are risks to be had with these, and I do think it's best to see a healthcare provider for a prescription, and that way you can be monitored for the development of these side effects because it is your eye, and eye health is nothing that you wanna mess around with. Um, so that's why I have reservations with recommending eyelash serums. But I hope this video answered your questions all about fat loss around the eyes as it relates to things like Latisse and other lash serums, and that it was informative. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.